So you want to become a risk manager, then you are in the right course. In this course, Quantitative Risk Management, our goal is to see how we can actually approach risk, mainly financial risks, but not only financial risks, and how we can deal with these tricky objects. Now, we will see that risk is a very important uh, component of human life, and there are tools and techniques that we can try to use, and please notice, try to use, um, to deal with it. Um, in this course, we will see different perspectives. So today, for example, in the first lesson, we will start with a more philosophical and epistemological, if you want to go in a little bit more detail, uh, view of risk. Because it's fundamental to understand what is the object we are playing with. In the next lessons, we will enter more into the modeling and into the assessment of risk. So we will consider different tools from probability and statistics that we can actually use to play with this strange object. Uh, we will consider some uh, elements of extreme value theory because we are very often interested in the so-called extreme risks and rare events. But we will also consider elements of time series, of statistical inference, and so on. During the course, we will try to uh, give different perspectives. So, uh, in particular, in the second part of the course, I will try to uh, raise points of criticism for the different techniques we might use. Uh, but let's start with the first lesson. Let's start with the first fundamental question of this course. This is a question that we will start answering today, but that only at the end of the entire course we will be able to answer with a little bit more sophistication and, if you allow me the term, with a little bit more substance. Now, risk is, first of all, and again, I stress that a lot in this course, a fundamental component of our human life. We know that, we have been knowing this, since the 5th, or probably even more, century before the Common Era. There is a very important and essential book in the Hindu tradition, so it's a sacred book for the Hindu tradition, that goes under the name of Gita. Now, in the Gita that was written between the 5th and the 2nd century, before the Common Era, risk is described as an essential component of human life. In other words, the only way not to have risks is to remove humanity. If there is no human being, there is no risk. And in fact, let's think of an earthquake. What's the risk of an earthquake if nobody could be hurt or if you want to consider the financial terms if no loss could be generated because of the failures of the infrastructures because of the earthquake so what happens if there is an earthquake somewhere in some remote planet in the universe, very far, far away from our galaxy. Is it a risk for us? Yes? No? Uh, we will see that actually, if you remove the human component from many of the phenomena we 
will try to model also from a financial point of view, then the concept itself of risk falls. Sometimes in some slides, as this one, you will see that I suggest some external readings. Most of the times, these are non-fiction books, quite accessible, that are very useful if you want to go deeper into the understanding and the discussion of the different topics we are considering together. For example, a beautiful book I strongly suggest if you are interested in risk is the one by Ben Stein, Against the Gods, which is a very, very interesting survey about the concept of risk and about the history of risk from the very beginning until now. So, risk is a human thing, and we will see that probability, the theory of probability, is its logic. We need probability in order to deal with risk, in order to be able to give an interpretation to risk, in order to assess risk. Without probability theory, it is essentially impossible to do anything practical with respect to risk. But if risk is a human thing, it means that it deals with humans. And humans, and from a mathematical and probabilistic perspective, represent the so-called real world. Now, why is this point that seems actually trivial, I would say ridiculous, is so important for us? Because if risk deals with humans and humans are the real world or they belong to the real world, then from a probabilistic point of view, we have to play with the physical measure, what in financial mathematics sometimes we call the market measure. In other words, we will see that in risk management, in order to be effective and efficient in dealing with risk, but also in speaking about real risks, we don't have to rely on the risk neutral measure or at least, we don't have to rely too much on the risk-neutral measure. We can still use, and in very limited situations, we will use the risk-neutral measure, but we always have to find a way of connecting the risk-neutral measure to the physical measure, a way of taking our assessment under the risk-neutral measure and try to translate it into an assessment under the physical measure. If we are not able to do that, then we can be in very paradoxical situations, like, for example, some of the situations in which we will find ourselves under the so-called Basel framework, which is a set of international rules meant to regulate the financial system or, to be more exact, the banking system at an international level. Now, we will see that there are situations in the field of credit risk, but also of operational risk, in which the regulations uh, written by the Basel Committee on Banking Supervision require us to do something, and if we do that something, then we are doing something wrong. Because of the absurd assumptions are, that are behind the modeling choices that are prescribed, because sometimes we play as if we ignored the reality of things because we restrict our evaluation only to the risk-neutral framework, which is not what happens in the everyday life. So what I want to stress is that we will often play with different risk measures, we will often play with different probability measures behind those risk measures, 
but it's very important that the most relevant, the pivotal probability measure for us is the physical measure, is the market measure, and not the risk-neutral measure. So in risk management, the real world and real risk management, in the risk management that is useful and that we can try to use, and again, try to use to deal with risk, to speak about risk, to assess, to hedge risk, is the risk management that relies on the physical measure. Now, in order to play with risk, in order to be able to deal with risk, we need a definition of risk. So we have to answer the question, what is risk for us? Now, we will see through the course that the more we acquire knowledge about the modeling of risk, the more we can be precise on the definition of risk. And actually, the proper definition will be given at the end of the course. Uh, but we need a starting point. So my idea is that the best way to approach risk is to start from a sort of layman definition of risk, which is the following. Risk is the probability of an injury, damage, loss, or any other negative occurrence that is caused by external or internal vulnerabilities, and that possibly, please notice, possibly, might be prevented by preemptive action. Now, I'm pretty sure that you are thinking that the definition we have just given is not nice, is not sophisticated enough. So what's the point of uh, trying to model risk at the master level in mathematics if then I have to rely on this layman definition? Now, you will see that actually, and I will try to convince you through the course, that this definition is rather useful for different reasons. First of all, it is simple and it contains essentially all the elements we will need later. For sure, we will have to be a little bit more precise, we will have to make some adjustments, some formalities in order to use our nice probabilistic and statistical models, but all the ingredients for the recipe are there. Second, again, remember I told you that risk management, in order to be useful, in order to be practical, needs to rely and to connect to the real world. So a layman definition is always something nice for a risk manager. Be humble. This is the first suggestion I can give you in order to be a decent risk manager. Don't try to uh, complicate water if it is not necessary. Now, why is that definition useful and nice for us. Because as I was telling you a minute ago, it contains all the ingredients. It tells us that risk is the probability of something bad. So first of all, we need something bad. What does it mean? It means that if I'm considering a portfolio that is an arbitrage as those that we have considered in financial mathematics, so a portfolio that generates no loss with probability 1 and has a pro possible uh, positive probability of generating uh, positive returns for us. Where is the risk? There is no risk in there. So from a risk management point of view, is nothing interesting to be tackled. Okay, so we need something bad. We will see that this something bad needs to be specified and you will see that this something bad actually is really agent dependent. What is bad for me is not necessarily what is bad for you. And even when we consider the same type of event and we agree on the fact that what is bad for me is bad for you, then the perception we can have about this bad and about how bad can be different. If I lose 1,000 euros, I'm not happy. If, I don't know, Bill Gates, loses 1,000 euros, for sure I will not be happy. But the impact on the wealth is different. So the perception of the loss of the damage is definitely different. 
and we have the probability of this damage, of this loss. And this is the most important thing. A real, a correct definition of risk intertwines, intertwines probability and payoff. Risk is always the ensemble of the probability of something. And the probability of an event that generates a payoff. So you cannot separate, if you want to be a good risk manager, the probability from the payoff. The payoff for us, most of the time, in financial terms, will be a loss. So we want to minimize the loss. We want to be able to hedge for the, rock, for the loss, to contain the loss, all the things we will see together. But we always consider the loss and the probability together. They are intertwined. They cannot be separated. Otherwise, you cannot be, you cannot approach risk in the correct way. You cannot be a good risk manager. Okay, then you are just playing with numbers that lose very quickly their meaning. Okay, always in the same definition. Then we see that this loss, this damage that has a probability, is generated by external or internal vulnerabilities. Now this is again. Quite general, but it's already interesting for us because it tells us and it will give us a way of, for example, making a distinction between a risk that we will call systematic and a risk that we will call idiosyncratic. We will be able, thanks to the understanding of external and internal vulnerabilities, we will be able to see if a risk is a risk we can try to diversify or if it is a risk that we cannot diversify and from an operative point of view what we have is that the distinction between external and internal vulnerabilities will give us a pointer towards the direction that we have to follow in order to try to minimize risk so is, is there something that we have to do inside our organization, inside my portfolio, inside my strategy, or I have to look outside and maybe look for solutions outside. Lastly, the last thing that we have to underline in our definition is that in principle, it should be possible to prevent, at least partially, with some action that we have to identify and maybe to develop the risk that we are considering. If there is no possibility of preventing, at least partially, I repeat, a risk, then there is no need for risk management because there is nothing that we can do. So you see that this very simple definition will come again through the course with better and more specifications, but everything is already there. And please, the most important thing for me, for you to remember at this stage, is that correct risk management requires considering risk as the ensemble, as the union of two very important things, a probability and a payoff that cannot be separated without paying the price of losing the correct interpretation of risk. Something very simple that everyone knows, but that sometimes we tend to forget, is that risk is always associated to opportunity. So there are two faces of the same coin. There is no risk without opportunity. Especially from a financial point of view, you will see that if we have market risk, if we have credit risk, but also up to a certain point if we have operational risk, is because we are trying to take opportunities on the market by investing, by lending money, by being alive as a corporation, but also as an individual, if we think of us as human beings. So the fact that there is risk is always the price we have to pay for the opportunities. 
a completely negative view of risk is, first of all, useless. And second, if we really think that risk is only something bad, then we are losing opportunities. So it's also quite silly from uh, an investment point of view, from a business perspective. So in order to be good risk managers, for sure, we have to consider the negative side of risk. That is to say, the, the fact that we want to try to minimize risk, that we want to try to hedge at least partially a given risk. But we always have to remember that that risk is the counterparty, is the price that we have to pay for some opportunity that we want to try to get. If this is not the case, so if there is no positive side for the actions that we are taking and that generate risk, then we need to rethink what we are doing. Probably what we are doing is not so clever. A very important question that we have to ask ourselves and that we have to try to answer even if it may look speculative and too philosophical for a mathematician is the following. Is risk something objective or is it risk something subjective? What do I mean? Is it risk something that exists per se in the world out there and that does not depend on the observer, so it's there, it's part of the reality out there, and it does not depend, for example, on me, on my feelings, on my perception, on my beliefs, but it's there, it's objectively there, or is it risk rather something that depends on me, that depends on the observer, so on my perceptions, on my feelings, on my beliefs, on my beliefs and understanding at a specific time, in a particular time period, under a specific situation? Answering that question is very important because it opens not only philosophical uh, sub-questions that we will try to consider during the course and that we will try also to summarize at the end in the last lesson of the course, but is also rather important from a probabilistic point of view and from a practical point of view. Because recall that what I want to do in this course is to teach you how to use the different tools in practice. And obviously, I have no ambition of being able to teach you quantitative risk management completely in a course like this, but at least to give you the basic ingredients for you to go deeper into the studying and the understanding of the different topics if you are interested. So, what do you think? It's my point. So, I'm the instructor. So, obviously, uh, there is a bias in the course that relates to what I think about the different topics. And um, what is my point according to you? Is risk something objective? Or is it something subjective? It will be no surprise to see that I consider risk something subjective, something that does not exist per se. So there uh, for sure might be an event out there which is independent from me, but the impact of that event on me is always subjective. And since the definition of risk, as I told you, intertwines the probability and the payoff, the payoff cannot be separated by the agent, cannot be separated from the agent. So the payoff is always agent dependent. An economist would say that there is a utility function or a risk function that tells how happy for example, or how sad is the agent with respect to different uh, events like buying a good, taking a given decision, uh, taking a given action. But also in psychology, we know that we have a lot of results about our perception of the world. In philosophy, we have that. But 
we even just can rely on intuition. So as I was telling you before, with the example of the thousand euros for me and Bill Gates, that applies in many situations. A loss of 100 euros for someone can be a tragedy, for someone else is nothing, maybe a loss of 1 million euros for someone is nothing. I mean, if you are on a hedge fund, a loss of 1 million euros is part of the game, so it's not a tragedy, as it could be, for example, for one of us. And even if we think of injuries, now we all agree on the fact that an injury is something bad, so we prefer not to uh, have injuries. But it's, again, very, sub very subjective. Uh, maybe I can be the guy for which a small scratch on the hand is a tragedy and I keep on complaining about that for one week and there are other guys for which a scratch is nothing and they just shake their shoulders and say, okay, who cares, it's a small scratch. I mean, it's, we have a lot of this type of uh, examples in the several movies, uh, action movies, they, they continuously produce in which the, the hero uh, is able to do whatever he wants without, without a, an arm, without a leg, while for a normal person that would be something that would stop you, I mean, for sure would stop me. So the payoff, which is strictly related to perception, makes risk subjective, starting from its own definition. And this, even without considering the other aspects of the definition, because if a vulnerability is internal, it means it depends on me. So again, the definition of risk depends on me, depends on my internal vulnerabilities. And if there are actions that I can take to prevent risk, but these actions are constrained by, for example, the amount of money I have to build a strategy, again, risk depends on me. And the probability of an event, are we sure that the probability of an event is something objective, that it's there? Yeah, if you are a frequentist, you might be inclined to think that probability is something objective. So it's this number that we compute between zero and one that tells us how likely an event is. Fine, but if, like me, for example, you're a subjectivist and you are in the, in the school that belongs to definity, then you think that actually probability is something subjective, is a sort of, is the result of a bet that every time you try to assess and to evaluate the reality, you make. So, and in any case, if you are a subjectivist, like as I am, uh, there is even another point. Since there is no certainty and there is no full agreement on the definition of probability in terms of the frequentist approach, in terms of the logicist approach, in terms of the subjectivist approach, and all the other approaches we may think of, for a subjectivist, the only fact that you choose one of the different approaches and that you believe in one of the different approaches makes your choice subjective. So again, even if you are a frequentist, the, the simple fact that you believe in the limit of the frequency makes you uh, an incognito subjectivist. You don't know it, but essentially you are. Uh, so risk is very subjective. Now, what is important, so in, in the fact of understanding that risk is subjective, it is important because it gives us a way of being humble and in understanding that all the numbers that we will get are not true, per se. They are always dependent on our assumptions, on our beliefs, on our perception, on our settings in a specific time period because obviously you can be the same person but if your wealth is 100 or your wealth is 1 million makes things different so it's very important to understand this in order to be humble and read the numbers we will get with the 
right eye. That is to say, being happy and proud and being able to use the numbers we compute, but always being aware of the fact that we might be wrong, that another risk manager could get different numbers. And if those numbers are obtained from plausible assumptions, maybe he or she could be right. And this opens the problem of model risk. So the risk that our model is wrong. That will be one of the last topics of the course.